So here for another episode, we're going to be analyzing one of my own replays. We'll be taking one from, from the International. Uh, this game was a particularly nice game. It was our first game against LGD in the Grand Finals. And they, t they tried to throw us off on, on the laning phase, what they were trying to do. We didn't, we didn't expect it. They put some Enchantress mid and they ended up putting the Storm safe lane. Um, and the Bloodseeker back, back down to our lane. But <clears throat> to go back to it, since it's a replay where I'm trying to learn, and I'm also trying to learn mostly about myself, not so much about what LGD are doing, um, I can start off by thinking to myself, what was my thought process? What did I do and did it work? Uh, so this game, I opted for a bit of mana here. I pull, I, I'm pulling my, guy te my guy's Tangos, uh, in this case the mid laner. Um, and I'm scaling the Splinter Blast together with, you know, having my clarity going. So what I'm trying to create down here is a nice game for my Spectre. We talked about pulling earlier, and pulling is still a very powerful thing uh, today, and it was back, back in this patch as well. Um, I, get, I managed to get my pull off, which helps my Spectre a lot. It also helps the lane get back a bit. He doesn't want to be up here where Crystal Maiden can flank him from one end, and... It's just harder to get last hits, and if they're further down, we might also be threatening the kills, so an optimal place to, to be is, is down here. So I, I managed to pull the small camp, but I wasn't able to pull it through as we blocked the big camp ourselves. So what happens with the creep wave? Well, it does depend on the small camp, but here the creep camp uh, didn't kill anything. It comes back, and now we have two waves on, on the dire team, and we kind of want to use our creep wave advantage to do whatever we can with it, and, and what you can do when you have this many creeps is you play offensive for a bit. So we're now in their face, really abusing the fact that this is a meat shield. If they right-click us, what happens is that the neutral creeps, or sorry, the lane creeps, they will, they will hit them back. And that's something that you often can't tank this early in the game. My thought process is a lot about the Spectre. I'm really trying to give Ana a good game. I'm not trying to give him a good time. Um, so I'm also worrying a bit about, am I, am I taking XP I shouldn't be taking? Am, am I taking last hits uh, that I shouldn't be taking? Uh, <laughs> not, not often the case. Sometimes you take last hits as, as a support. Uh, most often you don't. But something that can be very harmful is taking XP at the wrong time. Um, watching a replay can maybe help you get more mindful about how much XP you actually took. Because in, in the game, it might be hard to keep, to keep track of. So that's... Again, from my perspective as a support player, I'm trying to really help my core. If my core is happy, I feel like I did my job. Um, but I'm also fully trusting and believing in Anna's capability of, of doing, doing stuff that I, that I give, give to him, doing something with it, you know? Uh, if I give him the perfect start and he has, he has the wrong item choice, well, you could say that he let me down or he let down the lead that uh, he got from resources that I invested in it, or we invested as a team but that doesn't matter and it should it is the wrong mindset to think oh it went it went wrong um, so I can no longer trust him it's just sometimes things don't work out right but in this game I remember vividly very successful game we managed to really come together as a team and also have some moments that I'm pretty proud of myself but I keep managing my uh, my mana I keep managing my teleport I look at the minimap, uh, try to figure out if there's something that I want to react to, something that I want to address. Uh, I end up teleporting mid, and as I do that, Ana also ends up dying bottom. This can be viewed as a big problem, or it can be viewed as a mistake from Ana. I don't really know. It doesn't really matter in the end. Uh, we still have to be objective about everything that happens. Me teleporting mid, it might have saved the tower. This tower, we're going to keep it along for a very long time, and it's going to be a big problem for LGD later on. Ana ends up TPing top. This also affects my game. Where is my best position to be? I, I Again, I don't want to overthink anything. I don't want to stress anything. Something that I could be stressing would be the fact that my Spectre now TP top. Maybe I need to be close to him to help him. Maybe the best way of helping Spectre is by pushing the bottom lane in. Uh, this is often a very hard decision. Uh, and a very hard call to make. I often make these, these choices based on an instinct uh, during the games. In the replay, I have a chance to analyze and to see if it worked out or, it, or if it didn't. But my instinct was telling me to, to keep pushing this bomb lane. I also didn't have effective mana to TP around, so I would have felt really bad. It would have ruined my game to go top. And I, I often 
often think that support players, they ruin their games too often because they're too considerate about another, another person's game and they don't necessarily believe in their own capabilities, what they can do given a certain amount of space with a hero. Um, when you get really confident in a support hero, we see it most often with position fours, but this patch position fives are really strong. Uh, what I often see is a player doesn't believe in his own ability. If you don't believe in your own ability, you, you can be burdening your team a lot more than, even though you're trying to enable them, even though you're trying to help them as much as you can, by the fact that you're not being selfish, that you're not enabling yourself, you're, you're hindering your team. You don't dare to push that bottom lane in because you want to give that Spectre the perfect game. Well, you're not really playing the best Dota you could be playing and you're probably not helping the Spectre the best way you could be helping her. So this is a lot of my thought process when I'm playing. How can I help the best? Is it, is it right for me to be selfish or selfless? Um, try to think of the perspective of, of another player. Um, watch the replay from his perspective as well. This is something that can give you a much better idea of the job that you're doing um, to help him. Um, and it can also give you some insight in how greedy should I be or uh, should I ask for something even. Sometimes you can ask the carry player to give you a couple of creep waves or to go to the jungle or whatever to help you get your mana boots. Um, and this can completely change the game. Just because you, you, you know how much you can do with that mana boots or you know how much you can do given that little bit amount of space. So, moving on, moving on in this game, uh, we, had a, we had a funny and interesting stalemate. They have this enchantress who's desperately trying to push our mid tower. And we have this treant who has living armor that keeps healing it up. Uh, so we kind of read LGD very well in what they're trying to do. Only, they only had a couple obvious plays um, that were just their only plays, but they were so obvious that we managed to counter them. Here with this guy constantly pushing in the mid lane, we set up a kill for him. If he pushes too far, uh, this is the only thing that we had to counter because we were happy with the state of the game. Uh, whereas LG, LGD felt like they had a timing that they needed to push or if they don't push it, we're about to hit our own timing. So from our perspective and my perspective, we're, we're just countering their only play on the map. We're reading the game, uh, what, what are they doing, what's possible? Well, I'm top, they can't kill me top, okay. That means there's only two other places that they might be able to go and we just have to read that and prepare for that. And in this game particularly, we have a lot of cool, cool combinations. We have some really strong team fight between the, the Viren, the Earthshaker and the Monkey King. Treant becomes a great amount of team fight given certain conditions. He needs, he needs other people to deal damage. He needs his ulti to be, you know, as good as possible. And in this game, it's a very good, good tree in game, not just for tree armor, but the overgrowth is just very, very strong. But my focus, my, my contribution to this game is going to be my Winter's Curse. I have these amazing, these amazing heroes that abuse the setup that, that Winter's Curse is. If I catch two or three heroes, they're about to eat uh, an arsenal of AOE stuns and uh, enough damage to, to kill them always. So that's my main focus, to use my Winter Curse my Winter's Curse well, and there's also a lot of value in Cold Embrace. The other two spells is more about deep pushing. It's, of course, if it land a good one in a team fight, it's a great team fight. But these are the two things that I mainly focus on. Looking at my teammate, when should I embrace him? Looking at the enemy, when should I curse him? And in this game, I think we, we managed to land a couple cool combos. But there's also another use of Winter's Curse that is way less flashy and is uh, way less interesting. But I still... I was still proud of that Winter's Curse, even though it was very simple. So moving forward in this game, we, we managed to get stronger and stronger. We hit our strong timings. Our Monkey King now has two items that just makes his Wukong incredibly strong. We have all our spells. Our Spectre also managed to get a Manta. Um, another really, really big timing. Shaker Blink Dagger. And we see this fight going really well. I'm a big problem for them. I'm again something that is stopping the storm from killing the guy he wants to kill. I'm also potentially setting them up for a disastrous team fight, so they start focusing me because I can also die very easy. Storm opted for an Orchid. But this also gives us freedom, and this is also part of the draft, but part of the Viren hero. It gives us freedom in the sense that other heroes maybe get to counter jump the storm who has to go on me. So they're no longer worried about the storm jumping them. They can even they can even go in because they know that the storm have to jump me. But here we're going to see 
even more usage. Let me go back a bit. We're going to see how you can also look at these spells, even though they're fantastic team fight abilities and they're great tools. Uh, I, I buy back after dying in the fight. I use my Cold Embrace on Ana, and I, I Winner's Curse the, the Ench simply just to stop her from hitting, buying my, my Spectre some time to heal up more. Um, this is again, you just have to make the best use of the situation. It's not the best Winner's Curse. It's not the most flashy Winner's Curse that just turns into a triple kill or anything like that. But the Winner's Curse set up Ana for enough HP to now run into the storm, survive the Enchantress, and yeah, like that, that was huge for us. Him getting a kill on, on their strongest core like this, us getting the mid tower. Oftentimes people are very shy with how they use their spells or they kind of only think that there's one good way of using an ability. Um, once you truly start feeling a hero, you're gonna start, you, you, you notice yourself that you're gonna start using spells much more optimally given any situation, um, and you don't limit yourself so much to, yeah, getting the great Wombo combo or hoping that you play so well, somebody makes a YouTube video of it. Oftentimes, the great, the great spells are the ones that are used very modestly, and that goes to show that you're really into the game, your head's into the game. I'll show you one more example of a, of a Winner's Curse that I was thinking a lot about. I was thinking about my best purpose in the fight, and yet a lot of people might not have thought anything of it or might not even have noticed it. We, we decided to go for the Roshan here. They have some of the better Roshan contesting heroes. Blood Rise Spam from Bloodseeker. The big one is the ET Stomp uh, and the ET Spirit. Uh, we're gonna have this team fight. Wukong is being expended. We kill a Crystal Maiden. BKB has been used by a Bloodseeker. Looking great. We're gonna go back to finishing Roche. And I'm already thinking about one of our big problems. A uh, continuous annoying problem is this Echo Stomp. And as you can see, I simply just trade my ultimate that has an 80 second cooldown for a 12 second cooldown or 11 second cooldown stomp just because I don't want it to interrupt the team fight that we're, we're having down here. Our communication, going back to our other episode about team fight, we talked about everything that LGD were looking to do, what they're trying to do. And I thought to myself, if I stop the stomp, my Shaker and Trin, they will deal with the Bloodseeker and the Storm. I don't have to worry, no problem there. So. Very modest use of Winter's Curse, but at the same time, I feel like it was one of the better uses. Um, it is again, our, your small individual battle in Dota, your idea versus his idea. He wanted to mess with the Roche fight to his stomp. I didn't want to give it to him. Uh, so yeah, I, I thought about it, I invested into it and made it work. Um,